Hello everybody and welcome to this new Excel Hacks video and in this video I'm very excited because uh, I think this is a very powerful Excel hack. Uh, in this video I'm going to be showing you through a nifty little piece of code that I created uh, a couple of years back uh, that lets you do SQL dashboards entirely using Excel data. So you don't need a Microsoft Access database, you don't need SQL Server, all you need is Microsoft Excel. Uh, and a little bit of knowledge of SQL. So if, if you haven't got that knowledge of SQL and you still want to use uh, this, this, then uh, just nip on over to uh, Joe, who recently joined the channel, who's been creating some SQL uh, tutorials. Uh, have a browse through those and you should get a good gist of uh, what you uh, can do. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you, first of all, how to use this uh, SQL dashboard and uh, how easy it is to run SQL against your data. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, also how I've coded it and how you can create it yourself. Uh, if you'd like to download the workbook then it will be in the comments below. Um, so let's get started. So this code is very simple uh, and it lets us put SQL into our dashboards using the comments feature. So you see here, I've got some um, SQL in uh, in the comments in these cells, uh, and in this particular instance, I'm selecting the count of customer name from my database data. Uh, so this will just go through and count how many uh, field records there are uh, with uh, customer name entry in here. Uh, so if I press update, uh, I might move the design mode. Let me just come out of that. If I press update. It's going to run through the code. It's going to uh, run the SQL that is in all of the comments. So that's useful for quite a few reasons. Um, it means if you've got quite a big complex dashboard, then it's really clear for people what each individual cell is doing. Uh, it means that if you're working together, then it's very easy to reference what uh, is being pulled through and uh, it makes it quite easy to do changes if you all know SQL. Whereas if you have formulas, etc., or kind of interspliced pivot tables and things, sometimes it can get very confusing and, and difficult and, and unmanageable when most people are using it. Um, and it also just makes it very clear for anyone else looking at it exactly what is being pulled. Um, so that's how it works. It's very, very simple. Uh, if you want to add in your own, so that here we've just done some normal selects, counts and sums. Uh, if I go onto this one, and I want them to just be where city equals Cheeksbury. That's very simple to do. So I'm going to just copy these comments down, and uh, then I'm going to add in the where city equals Cheeksbury at the end of each of these. And then when I update this, it's only going to pull through those records or the data for those records where it equals Tewkesbury. Um, and we could duplicate this for some of the other cities in there. You can do company. Um, and um, for those of you that, that have a good knowledge of SQL, you'll realize quite how powerful this is because you can uh, pull through multiple data sets and join them together from multiple data tables of data. So that's how you use this macro. Uh, so let's move on to uh, how it works. Uh, so the code really is very simple. Uh, the, but the button code just calls the update counts uh, uh, sub procedure. Um, I'm just going to talk through this line by line. There's not much code in here. There's no more than kind of 20 rows, uh, but it, it, it is a little bit intricate. So I'll just talk through row by row. First of all, we're going to save the workbook. That's really important because if you've updated your data tab, then it's uh, if it hasn't saved, then it's not going to reference it properly unless it does. So you can remove that if you want, but I recommend keeping it in there. Uh, we've then just got the standard speeding up your code uh, entry, so turning screen updating off, turning calculation to manual. Uh, so if we've got lots and lots of data in our sheet, we don't want these to be turned on because it will just make it run really slowly. Um, these are just some database constants. Uh, you don't really need to pay too much attention to those. Uh, it's to do with how we access the database and, and, what, and the type of way we're using it. Um, and then we're creating our database uh, 
object um, and we're just giving it our provider details. So this provider is specific to my version of Excel. I'm using Excel 365 um, and you'll notice that the data source is this workbook.ming. So what this is meaning is that I'm taking the file path of the, the, the file that I'm in and I'm just opening up a, uh, a OLEDB connection to itself. Uh, so uh, that just lets us access the data within the same sheet. And you'll see when I have the SQL, I'm doing database underscore data, which is the name of the sheet. Uh, and then I'm just doing a dollar sign at the end of it, which is what you need to do in order to reference the tabs within the, your own sheet. They all need to have a dollar sign at the end of it. Um, so if you'd like to reference an external sheet, you can just change that this workbook.name to a, a, a kind of absolute file path. Um, or you can do this workbook.path and then just add in a name of one that's, that's nearby. Um, if that connection string doesn't work for you, which it won't do in older versions of Excel, uh, go to www.connectionstrings.com slash Excel, uh, and that will give you a big list of uh, different connection strings that you can use for your version. Um, and if you're still struggling, then drop your version um, in the uh, comments below, and I'll try and help you as best you can. Um, so let's move on. So we're just then selecting the sheet that has the comments in it. So in this case, it's uh, dashboards. Um, you might want to loop through more than one sheet. If you've got comments on multiple ones, that's possible. You can just copy this uh, and then I'll add in this workbook.sheet and do a different one. Um, and then we're going to loop through all the comments. So we're using an enhanced for loop that goes through uh, all of the comments in that sheet. Uh, and then it's going to test if that comment starts with select. Uh, so this only works for select SQL queries. Uh, if we type anything else in there, so this is a comment, um, it's not going to do anything in that one because it doesn't have the word select at the start of it. Uh, you'll also, so where it puts in the username at the start, you'll need to make sure that you delete that as well. And then let's just go back into our code. Uh, we're going to create a record set object. So that's the object that just stores the record that we're returning. Uh, and we're going to give it the uh, the text from within that comment. Um, and then we're going to just run that against the connection of its own sheet. Um, and we're going to extract the value from that record set and put it into the cell that the comment is in. And then just loops through and does it over and over and over again. And then we just close off our database, etc. So very, very simple way of creating a very effective um, and easy to use SQL dashboard. Um, so that's it, that's the this hack. Like I said, I'm very excited about this one. Um, I've used it quite a lot in, in my uh, actual um, profession over the last few years. Um, and it, it I, I find it helps, it makes things a lot more accurate when I'm creating my dashboards and things. Uh, so if you have your own way of creating uh, SQL dashboards, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'd be very interested. Uh, and thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you in an upcoming video.